welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Shok Mohammed. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of thanks to the Arab Parliament Speaker Dr. Mushal Al Salimi over the Arab Parliament's resolution dated February 12, 2019, which denounced statements issued by some international organizations concerning judicial sentences issued in the kingdom. His Majesty praised the Arab Parliament's supportive stances in tackling such unsolicited interferences into the kingdom's internal affairs. He expressed appreciation for the Arab Parliament's resolution in response to the systemic reports of some international agencies doubting the judicial sentences reliant on erroneous information. His Majesty hailed the Arab Parliament's key role in promoting inter-Arab cooperation and its tremendous efforts in defending Arab interests and causes. He commended the Arab Parliament's support to Bahrain's security and stability against all who attempt to tamper with its capabilities and unity, as well as its efforts to boost its prosperity and progress in all fields. His Royal Highness the Deputy King, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, today met the United Kingdom's Defence Senior Advisor to the Middle East, Lieutenant General Sir John Lorimer at Rafa'a Palace. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Deputy King and the UK's Defence Senior Advisor to the Middle East discussed a number of security affairs and strategic areas of collaboration aimed at promoting stability in the region. His Royal Highness Deputy King emphasized His Majesty King Hamad's role in advancing bilateral collaboration between the two countries and highlighted the steady growth of Bahrain-UK ties at all levels. The meeting was also attended by Bahrain Defense Force Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar al -Aimi. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Rafa'a Palace the UK's Defence Senior Advisor on the Middle East, Lieutenant General Sir John Lorimer, who is currently visiting the Kingdom. His Royal Highness affirmed the Kingdom's joint priority with the world is to achieve peace, security and stability, noting that the Bahraini-UK relations are unique and historic. He asserted that the partnership between Bahrain and the UK represents one of the foundations for security and stability in the area through its active participation in the military and security alliances to face various challenges. His Royal Highness praised the depth of relations between the two countries and their joint visions and ideas towards the importance of working collectively to face challenges. He expressed comfort in the development of relations between the two countries in various fields, the distinguished relation and advanced level of coordination and understanding to achieve mutual goals. His Royal Highness and the UK's Defence Senior Advisor on the Middle East presented recent regional and international developments, affirming that facing the challenges needs the construction and promotion of security alliances. For his part, UK's Defence Senior Advisor on the Middle East expressed the appreciation of his country for Bahrain's role in supporting the efforts to maintain security and stability, praising the efforts of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister on developing cooperation between the two friendly countries. Under the chairmanship of the Council of Representatives Speaker Fawziya bin Abdullah Zainal, the Shura and Representatives Council's Finance and Economic Committees held their first joint meeting with the government representatives to discuss the draft law to approve the general state budget of the fiscal years 2019-2020 in the presence of Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh al Saleh and the Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Financial, Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah al Khalifa. The meeting was also attended by the Minister of Finance and National Economy, the Minister of Representatives and Shura Council's Affairs, the President of the Shura Council's Finance and Economic Affairs Committee, and members of both Council's committees. Zainal affirmed the royal directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, and especially those mentioned in the royal speech during the opening of the first session of the fifth legislative term, will be a guide to serve the country and its people. 
She hailed the active cooperation with the government headed by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, the Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. She added that strengthening the positive cooperation between the legislative and executive authorities, taking into consideration the country's interests, meeting the aspirations of the citizens and persevering its gains, and ensuring the continuation of the program of direct support for eligible citizens will achieve the objectives of the state budget draft law, the government's action plan, and plans and programs aimed at strengthening the economy. Zena stressed the parliament's keenness to enhance the quality of work and achievements. For his part, the Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh al Saleh from the necessity for continuing cooperation between the legislative and executive authorities to implement the general state budget for 2019-2020, noting that the directives of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince assert the necessity for maintaining citizens' needs and directing support to its beneficiaries. As Saleh stated that the current exceptional circumstances require exerting further efforts to implement the budget as soon as possible. For his part, the Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, stated that the budget project will achieve further advancement for the kingdom under the leadership of His Majesty the King and will achieve the sustainability of the development march. The Deputy Prime Minister urged that the government's keenness and cooperation will, and consensus will be the predominant characteristics of the meetings that discuss the budget project. He stressed the government has been keen that the budget's draft law will reflect the approaches and policies that have been agreed on. He noted that one of the most important requirements for strengthening economic and social security is reflected in the general state budget, which reflects the government and legislative authorities' keenness to preserve the current citizens' gains, as well as providing main services and supporting the government's support program beneficiaries. He also noted that the government started implementing a financial program in 2015, which aims to sustain the financial situation of the state budget for the country and its continued efforts through the fiscal balance program in 2018. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, presented the financial rules on the basis of which the state's general budget estimates for the fiscal years 2019-2020 are based on. He noted the sustainability of the government services has been a top priority during all phases, focusing on important principles such as including the fund of the government monetary citizen support programs and the government support item and monitoring the operational expenditures exceeding the budget allocated for ministries, including the Ministry of Education, Health and Youth and Sports Affairs. He added that the government will continue to implement projects in the housing, education, health and social services fields, amongst other fields, funded by the state budget and supported by the Gulf Development Program's allocations. Under the patronage of His Majesty the King, the 10th award ceremony of the UNESCO King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa Prize for the use of information and communication technologies in education was held yesterday in cooperation with the Ministry of Education at the UNESCO's headquarters in France. His Majesty the King deputized the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi, to attend the ceremony and present the prize to the winners. The ceremony was also attended by UNESCO General Director Mrs. Audrey Azoulay, Bahrain's Ambassador to France, Mohammed Abdel Ghaffar Abdullah, Cultural Advisor and Deputy Permanent Representative to UNESCO, Sheikh Wafa bint Abdullah Al Khalifa, in addition to senior officials, diplomatic corps, media personnel, and ICT expertise and specialists, as well as Bahraini students studying at French universities. In her speech, the UNESCO Director General praised the distinguished role of UNESCO King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa Prize for the use of ICT in education and the support of His Majesty the King to the prize, expressing thanks and appreciation to His Majesty for the prize that serves students and teachers worldwide. She also noted that Bahrain celebrates the 100th anniversary of the emergence of formal education as the kingdom is one of the leading countries in education and higher education. She said that Bahrain is preparing to launch the University of the Future, the Hidaya University, this year that is expected to play a pioneering role in the region, mainly in the field of artificial intelligence. She congratulated the winners and thanked the prize jury members. Then the Minister of Education delivered Bahrain's speech and extended the greetings and congratulations of His Majesty the King to the winners, stressing that the prize rewards outstanding initiatives in the creative use of ICT in education to disseminate humanitarian experiences. The minister added that this award is at the heart of serving UNESCO's humanitarian objectives. The minister highlighted that the kingdom celebrates the 100th anniversary of formal education, pointing out that thanks to the great support of His Majesty the King to education, Bahrain has achieved an advanced level of educational development locally and internationally to take the lead in the inductors of education for all. He also lauded the close cooperation between the Kingdom and the UNESCO in all fields, concerned by the organization as Bahrain currently hosts the Arab Regional Center for World Heritage, the Center of Excellence for Technical and Vocational Education, and the Regional Center for ICT. 
He added that the royal directives constantly reaffirm this cooperation to best serve the joint goals of spreading knowledge, achieving progress, development and peace. Based on His Majesty's vision that Bahrain should remain a global center for coexistence, peace and dialogue between religions, cultures and civilizations. After that, head of the jury, Dr. Daniel Burgos, briefed the audience on the two winning projects. Then the Minister of Education and the UNESCO Director General presented the awards to the winners. On the sidelines of the ceremony, the Minister of Education, accompanied by the UNESCO Director General, inaugurated an exhibition organized by the Ministry which highlighted the educational process in the Kingdom and aspects of the cultural progress in the field of education. excited to be here today because we've now been awarded the UNESCO King Hamad bin Issa Al Khalifa ICT and Education Prize. We were very nervous when um, we first heard about the prize from UNESCO. We wondered could we possibly um, be awarded it and we're very happy to say we've been awarded it today. So thank you to the Kingdom of Bahrain. Um, what, is the, what is Can't Wait to Learn? Globally, over 75 million children cannot access education due to conflict. And what we're trying to do with all our partners, and that is ministries from Jordan, from Lebanon, from Uganda and from Sudan, we're trying to, to work together and create an alternative. That's an alternative using gaming technology. We take the curriculum and we convert it into a game that teaches children how to read, in Arabic and English and also how to do maths in Arabic and English and the results are really really exciting and we hope that this will be the springboard to be able to reach more children and I must say all the interest that we're getting after having been awarded the prize it gives us good hope for the future. We are extremely grateful uh, for receiving the the prize this it's a incredible recognition for the work that our team has done for over eight years it's not easy to start uh, developing new technology for education um, uh, and it's not easy especially for women to carry this risk. So the idea of ThingLink is that um, the future of learning is more visual and more digital and images are actually the main user interface 
for learning. And so we have developed an easy way to add information to images so that that can be text or sound or video and student can this way document their learning outside the classroom or inside the classroom and this way learn the essential of digital storytelling and digital literacy. I'm very happy and honored to be here and, and award two prizing, uh, prize winners. And this year we saw uh, various projects with innovative use of ICT. And these two winning prize demonstrate very simple but powerful solutions of ICT, uh, making education available and accessible to, to every children in the world. And this prize is very meaningful and making great contribution to the world. The prize uh, had been uh, the best uh, reputed prize of UNESCO uh, because it has been uh, uh, mobilized the largest number of applications uh, uh, since the launch of the prize. And uh, especially this year, we uh, propose a very challenging topic about the use of frontier technologies for the most vulnerable group of uh, the world. The Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, today inaugurated the activities of the Gulf Petrochemicals and Chemicals Association Research and Innovation Summit. With the participation of more than 300 participants from international leaders and experts in the chemical industry and senior officials from regional government bodies and circles from 81 countries across the world. The summit aims to exchange ideas on strengthening strategic partnerships, diversification strategies and growth in the era of the fourth industrial revolution. The Minister of Oil stressed the importance of the GCC and Middle East countries to invest in research and innovation and to provide the best to ensure a steady supply of high quality for the world's increasing demand for chemicals due to the population increase in the world. He added that the world today is witnessing fierce competition among the various international companies in the context of globalization and digitization to overcome these difficulties and challenges. The Minister said that Gulf Petrochemical Industries Company is exerting efforts to achieve ambitions and high achievements. I'd like to thank uh, the Gulf Petrochemical Association for uh, setting up this very important summit. It's to do with innovation and research. Uh, there has been a lot of effort in the region in uh, research in both petrochemicals, uh, oil and gas, upstream and downstream, and we're seeing the convergence of that effort. There is commercialization of new technology. The region is becoming a major pl player in the, uh, uh, in, in the world. It, uh, it is uh, an, a region of innovation, not just consuming uh, technologies, but technologies are pr being produced in the region, and we're seeing it being commercialized. So well done uh, to all those efforts. We thank all the sponsors, and uh, we thank uh, the organizing committee of, uh, of the event. Excellency, the Minister of Oil was uh, extremely adamant to hold this uh, important conference uh, in Bahrain, uh, because he believes that uh, the uh, sustainable development uh, in our economies in the GCC countries has to be built on innovation and research development. The National Bureau for Revenue held a VAT workshop for professionals working in the financial sector, during which the NBR recap general and sector-specific VAT concepts, including invoicing and filing. Following a question and answer session, 54 representatives from 34 enterprises were given the opportunity to visit the unique interactive demo center that provides innovation learning experiences to ensure the effective implementation of VAT. Today's workshop is a continuation of the series of workshops organized by the NBR to provide an inclusive platform for all stakeholders from the public and private sectors to ensure the smooth registration of companies with an annual supply of BD500,000 to BD5 million by June.